Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist. And today I didn't really have anything super prepared for a video, so I thought I'd just go through what I've been working on the last couple days and show a couple of quick tips and tricks that I thought were clever solutions to problems. So the first thing I made in this file was this table here. I just modeled it manually. One thing that's kind of annoying about it is because it's rectangular, um, you can't just select a loop and scale it to change the profile of something because it scales more on the x-axis than it does on the y-axis because it's rectangular instead of square. So when I did the second table I came up with a cool way around that. I modeled the table square so I can select any of these loops and scale them and it scales the same on the x and the y-axis. So that sped up that a little bit. Um, and then at the end I just put a deform resize on it and you can make the table whatever length you want with the deform resize. Another thing I did that was kind of cool is because it's square you can actually rotate the legs around the center. So I just put the origin in the center and then on, on my array one-dimensional node I just added at the very beginning of it a separate geometry with a selection so then I can make a vertex group of the leg of the table and then separate the table into two parts based on that vertex group. So then only the leg of the table is arrayed, and I just did an array that rotates 90 degrees around the origin point. So that just made it, I don't know, maybe 10% faster to model that table. It wasn't much. But then on the second one, because I already had that set up, this one took no time at all. So that's just kind of a cool trick for modeling tables. Model it square, only model one leg, and then rotate it around the center, and then resize the table at the end. Then I started working on some other things. I modeled this chair, which I don't particularly like, and I thought the proportions were all wrong. If you put a person next to it, you can kind of see. So then I made this node group, which um, just makes a chair out of cubes, basically, all in geometry nodes. And the idea was you could play with the numbers and find a chair whose, whose proportions you liked, and then model with this as kind of a guide. Um, which is what I tried to do for this chair, and I didn't really like that one either, and it still took a long time. Uh, this was a simple node group that worked pretty good for adding some shape to the back of the chair, um, and all it does is it looks at the z-coordinate of each vertex, and then offsets it on the x-axis by some amount using the uh, quadratic interpolation node from the quadratic radius node. So that works pretty good for adding a simple effect similar to what you might get by, by putting a lattice modifier or something like that on the mesh. But um, this way you don't have to edit it so much, it's just a number, you don't have to worry about shaping it. And that's just so you can model like the back of the chair flat and then add the shape to it later. Um, so then I started thinking about it some more and I got some reference for old antique chairs and I just started modeling pieces. So I modeled a bunch of different legs, modeled a bunch of different seats, then I modeled a bunch of different backs. And with all of these models they're pretty simple. Um, these curved legs are maybe the most complicated because they actually change on the y-axis. All the rest of these they're perfectly flat, all the backs are perfectly flat, all the seats are pretty flat um, on the z-axis. So you're really sort of working in two dimensions which makes things a lot easier to edit because you can just pick a view and lock yourself to it and not worry about it. And then using the bend or something we can add detail to it later. One thing I was trying to keep in mind was the poly count. I didn't want these to be too high poly. Um, they actually have a bevel on them too which can be taken off to make them even lower poly but um, it's easy with stuff like this because there's so many details in the reference to make them higher poly than you need. But you got to keep in mind in for how I intend to use them you're probably never going to see it from closer than like this looking down on it. I kind of feel like modeling assets for games is harder than modeling for a still shot or even an animated shot because for the still shot you know that you're looking at it from one point of view and you can set that up and you can set that up at the beginning and then you know work to that point of view. So if you have things that are out of the camera view you don't have to worry about it so much. Whereas in a game where you can rotate the camera and you can't guarantee how someone's going to view something, um, you have to do a lot more work to make sure it looks good from every angle and you really get the proportions right and stuff like that. But there's also some advantages to it because I know that the 
view is the zoom level is locked you can't zoom all the way in on something so if i know you can only view it from a maximum of this close then i can model all the details so that they look good at that resolution but maybe break down upon closer inspection um because these are actually maybe even a little higher poly than they need to be but um you know, there's really not a lot of detail to them. Anyway, so I modeled all these parts, legs, seats, and backs, and then I put all of those in collections. So there's a front and a back legs collection because this leg doesn't really work on the back. Um, seats collection, backs collection. Then I added vertex groups to the backs. So this ring of vertices here, I put in a vertex group called legs, and I did that on all of them. And then all of the legs, well, I don't remember if the legs have a vertex group at the top, but I think the legs have a vertex group at the top. And then on all these seats, um, this is the back here. And then on the front, the um, I have two vertices and a vertex group, which are called legs again. So then what I did for the chair generator is they just have a geometry node. And if you change the seat, it makes you a random chair. And then you can look at it and be like, do I like this one? Not really. Pick a different number until you find a chair you kind of like, and then you can tweak all the values. So this one looks okay. So then you can inspect it and be like, I think the seat's too far back, so you can shift the seat forward to where you want it. And, and then I think eventually I would convert that to a mesh and uh, finish it up from there. Um, eventually I'm going to have to pick like probably six or ten of these to be my ten different types of chairs and um, bake textures and stuff, but I haven't gotten that far yet. Anyway, the way this um, node group works is I just have, I made a group that picks a random instance from a collection, so I pick a random back, I pick a random leg for the back legs, I pick a random leg for the front legs, and then I pick a random seat, and then I start with the back and I find the vertex group for the legs, and I merge it together to create two points, and then I just instance two of the back leg objects on those points. And then using those same points here, I make that into an edge like this, and then I extrude that edge out by a certain amount, which you can control with the seat um, depth. You can control how big that face is. And then I use the deform match quads node to um, place the seats on that plane. And then of course the seats have the two vertices in the front. So I pull, separate those two out for the front legs. And then I take the random object I selected from the collection for the front legs and I instance those on those points. Um, and then I add a little bit of a bend. Oh yeah, I do that up here too for the back. Um, so here I merge the back and the back legs together, and then I do a bend on those, which you can control with this back bend value. Then I put join the seat in, join the front legs in, and then, oh yeah, and then I did a bit of a bend, this hourglass bend, where you can sort of adjust the chair that way. Um, kind of makes it wider too, which I didn't really want it to do, but. So that is the, um, that's my chair generator that's probably way more complicated than it needs to be. But like I said, it's sort of a temporary node. Um, I kind of intend to make a chair, tweak it a little bit, and then apply it to have a mesh that I can further tweak um, just in regular old edit mode. But it puts them together really fast. I think it ended up being faster to make that node group than to have kit bashed these five chairs together from the parts I made. Um, so I think it ended up being worth it to make the node group even though it's not probably one I'll be able to reuse for anything else. So anyway, shorter video today. It was kind of random. I didn't really have anything planned so um, hopefully there were some interesting tips and tricks in there somewhere. Hopefully you're able to glean a couple things from it and maybe pick up a new technique or something. Um, I've got nodes on Gumroad, which you can check out if you want. Some other tools as well. Feel free to check those out. And then I'll have to come up with something for the next one. But yeah, that's all I've got for this one. Thanks for watching.